Welcome back to Introduction to Engineering Design. Today we're going to work on our drawings for our puzzle cube. So what we've got started, uh, or what we've done so far, is we have uh, drawn all of our puzzle pieces. We've assembled them together. So let me go ahead and open one of these pieces. So I'm going to open up uh, my piece number one, and it's stored in its own separate folder. So just like we did in our last video, what we would did is went up to File Properties on your top menu, up here my cursor is flashing and we've assigned a couple of different properties here one of the properties that we've chosen is the very first drop down description and I've entered in something that describes the part because we're going to use that in our drawing files and our assembly files as well so with that said we're going to start a new drawing file so to do that we'll go file new and if you're in the novice tab and you see this menu, which is where we, I told you to start, so you're probably still there, I want you to now select Advanced Tab. And in there, we're going to go to the tab for Westwood Engineering and choose Engineering underscore A as your drawing template. What that is is an a scale drawing with a custom logo and some other information in it. So go ahead and choose that. Just click the OK button. <clears throat> now, because we had piece one open, it assumes we want to we want to put that piece uh, we want to put that piece in there. If it wasn't open, I could browse for it. Uh, so let's just pretend it wasn't open. I'm going to go browse to piece one and go open. Once I open the piece one, I can drop my view in here if I want to right away. Uh, and it will drop the default of what I've got selected, which happens to be my front view. I would prefer, however, that you come over to your View Palette tab and you select that. From your View Palette tab, you can now choose Piece 1, which is open. And you have a much better selection of views to choose from. So this is really handy if you by chance did not put the best front view in the front plane of your part model. So let's go ahead and drop the front uh, view in, and I'm going to click on it. You'll notice that I can come in here and nothing happens. So what I need to do is click and drag, and now I drag my front view in, and I release when I get it to the place that I want it to be. Now I'm in an auto projection mode, and you should be too. So once I drop my first view, to project my top view, I simply drag my cursor above the front view and click again. And I come back down to my model, and you'll notice I'm going nice and slow, and then over to the right, and I click a third time to drop my right view. And now to do an isometric view, I just come up at a 45 degree angle, and I click. Don't worry where they lie right now, because it doesn't matter. To get out of my projected view mode, or my projection uh, mode where I'm dropping views, I just come over here and click the green OK button on the right hand side, or the green OK button left hand side on the right hand side. Either one works. So now I'm out of projected mode. Now you're going to notice a couple things. First of all this isometric I can move it around simply by hovering over where the blue line shows up and I get the movement arrow. So you see that little blue arrow. I can now move it. But notice what happens when I grab any of my other views. I get this orange relationship and you'll notice that I cannot make my front view move above or my uh, right view move above my front view and I can't make my top view move to the left or right of my front view. That's because the front view controls the placement of those so my front view dictates the left right position of my top view and the front view depicts the up down position of my right view. So that's just like what we learned when we manually did these orthographic projections. All right, super. So we've got a drawing, so let's go ahead and modify this a little bit. So if I want to modify the way a view, a particular view looks, uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is to make your isometric view colored. So to do that, you just click on the view anywhere in the view. So I click on it, and I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side and look at the properties for the drawing view. And then I want to select this button shaded with edges. So the second button from the right, and if you hover over, you'll see it. When I do that, I now pick up the color out of the model, uh, and it depicts the edges real nice. So that's a real good view. So now what we have left to do is we've got to go ahead and do some dimensioning. But before we do that, I want to point something out. So remember when I said 
to give this part a description. Look what appears down here in the title. That very description that you attached in the file. Really a handy feature. The other thing that attaches down here is a drawing number, which is called piece one. And that drawing number is actually the file name that you saved the file as. So with that said, let's do some dimensioning. So you may be in many different tabs, and we'll discuss these more as we move along in SOLIDWORKS. But where you want to be is you want to be on the annotation tab. So let's select that annotation tab. And to dimension, you want to use the Smart Dimension button. So let's go Annotation tab, Smart Dimension button. It goes active when it's gray. And you'll notice that I've got these selections preset for you for rapid dimensioning. Now to dimension, we need to have a datum or what we're going to measure from. And the way you should think about dimensioning is you're always going to go from your datum to the feature that you're dimensioning. So let's start out by using the left edge of my red piece and the bottom of my red piece as my datums. So bottom and left edge, that's where we're going to measure from. So to do a dimension, I come over with my dimension tool, looks just like it did in a sketch. I click once on my datum and then I click a second time on my feature that I'm dimensioning. Now I can click the, le the up and down buttons and put the and drop the dimension automatically or I can just move my cursor up here and drop it. Either one works. So I drop my dimension and I've just dimensioned that. The tool stays active so I can now dimension to my next feature which is the far side here and I'll drop that one automatically and now I'm going to give an overall dimension for the whole part. Now you see I just dimensioned this part in width. Now let's dimension in height. So we're going to go again from our baseline which is the bottom to my first saddle and I'm going to place it between my views. Now the bottom all the way to the top between the views. Now you'll notice that if I click up here I have to be careful where I'm clicking when I'm using this dot, so just barely click in it. So now I've dim dimensioned my width, my height, and the last thing I have to dimension is my depth. So I'll go ahead and dimension that. So now I've got height, width, and depth. Now look at this little orphan over here. I'm done dimensioning. So if I want to get out of my dimensioning tool, I can either click the check mark on the left over here. I can right click and use select or I can just hit the escape key which is my preferred way to do it. Now this side view you'll notice I didn't really do any dimensioning on it. That's a real good clue that if I didn't feel the need to dimension there isn't a definable feature on it. So once there's no feature on it we can say that we don't we're not really showing any new information so we could delete that view. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that view. When I hit the delete key, well, let me back up and tell you how click on the, the view, hit your delete key, and now it asks me, do you sure you want to delete this projected view? And the answer to that is yes, and I leave that warning on so I don't accidentally delete things. <clears throat> so now I've got my fully dimensioned view. Now the only thing I see that's odd about this is by chance the last part I was working on uh, in this, in this uh, uh, well, while I was dimensioning my last part, I was going to three decimal places. I don't really want to be in three decimal places on this part. And this template happens to default to that. So if I want to change that, I can come down here to the lower right hand corner and where it says IPS, click on the up arrow and edit document units. I edit my document units and I change my dimensioning to two decimal places and now all my dimensions alter. I could also right click any of my dimensions and change the value uh, on the dimension the way that it appears over here. So pretty simply I could alter that well as well. So I could change the number of decimal places right over here. We don't really want to do that though. We want to change them all. Alright, with that done what I'm now going to do is go File, Save. Now it's going to tell you you're going to update your drawing and your part and you're going to save them all. Go ahead and select save all 
it asks you where you want to save it. Now you're going to notice it defaults back to the same folder where you had your puzzle pieces originally. So that was why I was encouraging you to be sure and make a folder before you make your first puzzle piece uh, and use that folder over and over. So I'm going to save it with the same file name as the part, piece one, but a different extension, a .sldrw. Click Save and close my file. I'll do that for all five of my model pieces. And then we'll put our assembly in a drawing. That's the next video. Thanks for watching.